Okay, magandang hapon po mga chutis. Welcome Hello. to Dicken Ito Lai uh, for Philippine Politics and Governance. Hello, hello. Hello, Judis, and welcome to Dep at Italy online tutorial. Narito na naman tayo tuwing webe sa ating Philippine. And I am Tutor Ka from SDO Valenzuela. And I am Choto Rom from SDO City of Bugo. And with that, you're wrong. Okay, ngayong hapon, we will tackle... We are on uh, quarter nature. four. Five. Okay, we are on quarter four, week five. Ano po yung uh, topic natin today, Chotor Ka? Yes, you're wrong. Go ahead. Okay, it's our the topic... nature of elections and political parties in the Philippines. Okay, we would like to thank... Uh, SDO Negros Oriental for allowing us to use their module for the fourth quarter of second semester of school year 2021-2022. We would also want to uh, thank Ms. Uh, Ms. Mona Lisa A. Almugues uh, as the writer of the module under Schools Division Superintendent Senin Priscelio D. Pulin CISO 5. Maraming salamat po, Negros Oriental. Okay, Chotor Ka, ano bang objective natin ngayong hapon? Okay, our objective, uh, at the end of the session, the tutors should be able to analyze the nature of Negros election. Negros Oriental for... Yes, Write a paragraph on descriptive speech. Write a paragraph on descriptive speech about election, electoral and party systems in the Philippines, and display Institute room po po ay Okay, may ma uh, may problema po sa connection si Chotoy ka. So, uh, let's just proceed. Okay, so let's have a review on the previous episode. Okay, so identify what is being asked in the following sentences. So, yung topic natin last week, it's all about local government units. Okay, that is just, uh, that is a hint already. Okay, so our topic last week is about local government units. Okay, the first question is, it is the basic political unit in the Philippines. Okay, mga chutis, ano bang sagot dito? It is the basic political unit in the Philippines. Okay, so magot na ang isa nating chuti. Sabi ni Reigns Giver, uh, barangay daw. Uh, tingnan natin kung tama ba si Reigns Giver. Sabi niya, barangay. Okay, the correct answer is Barangay. Okay. Question number two. He or she is the chief executive of the barangay government. Okay. So, kung ang barangay natin ang smallest uh, political or the basic political uh, unit in the Philippines, sino naman ang namumuno ng barangay? Okay. Uh, ano bang sagit ng mga chutis natin? Okay. So sabi ng chuti natin, sabi ni Grazer ni, sabi niya, punong barangay. Okay, let us see if uh, her answer is correct. Okay, the correct answer is punong barangay. 
Okay, now let's move on to question number three. It is the legislative body of the barangay government which enacts ordinances for the welfare of the inhabitants. Okay, ano kaya ang sagot dito? It is the legislative body of the barangay. So ito yung gumagawa ng mga barangay ordinances at saka barangay resolutions. So ano kaya ang ano kaya ang tawag sa body na ito? So tingnan natin ang sagot na ating mga duties. Okay, sabi ni Joseph Sangguniang Barangay. Okay, tingnan natin kung tama ba ang sagot ni Joseph. Okay, that's correct. Tama si Joseph. The answer is Sangguniang Barangay. Now, let's move on to fourth question. He or she enforces all laws and ordinances relative to the governance and implements all approved policies programs, projects, services, and activities of the city. So, sino kaya ang nag-enforce or nag-implement ng uh, laws or ordinances sa cities? Okay, tingnan natin ang sagot ng ating mga duties. Okay, sabi ni Ken, uh, mayor daw. Tingnan natin kung tama ba ang sagot ni Ken. The correct answer is, City Mayor. Okay, tama si Kent. Okay, let's move on to the last question. It enacts ordinances, approves resolutions, and appropriate funds for the general welfare of the city and its inhabitants. Okay, para ito yung legislative body ng isang city. No, sila yung gumagawa ng mga ordinances at mga resolutions. Ano kaya ang tamang sagot dito? Okay, tingnan nga natin ang sagot ng ating mga duties. Okay, sabi ni Johanna ay sangguniang panglungsod. Tama kaya si Johanna mga duties? Tingnan nga natin. Okay, the correct answer is sangguniang panglungsod. Okay, so ang gagaling naman ng mga duties natin. No? So, uh, ang dami nyo natutunan last week about local government units. Okay, let's move on to our uh, topic for this week. Okay, so we are on module 5, week 5. So our topic for today is about the nature of elections and political parties in the Philippines. Okay, so uh, what is an election? Okay, so elections are devices for filling a government, uh, governmental office through choices made by the electorate a designated body of qualified people. Okay, so ano, kay, ano bang ibig sabihin ng uh, election sa madaling salita? So, an election is a formal group decision-making uh, process by which a popula population chooses an individual or multiple individuals to hold public office. So, ito yung proseso kung saan tayo namimili kung sino ang mamumuno sa atin. Okay? So, yan ang tinatawag nating election. Gaya nga ng nangyari noong May 9, no? kung saan tayo uh, humalal ng mga iba't ibang mga uh, leaders natin na magagovern ng Philippines. Okay? Next, what are the rules and functions of elections? So may iba't ibang rules and functions ng elections hindi lang uh, pag e-elect ng mga leaders. Okay, first is uh, isa na doon ang recruiting political leaders. Okay? So through elections, politicians, people who possess talents and skills relevant to electioneering are chosen. So isang rule ng election ay pag-elect o paghalal natin or pagpili ng ating mga nanumu namumuno sa Gobyerno. Gaya nga nang nangyari ng May 9 election. Second rule and function of election is making governments. Bakit making government? The, but the opposition as well. Okay, kasi uh, pag may election, di ba, nagsiselect tayo or uh, namimili tayo ng mga tao na namumuno ng ating gobyerno. At yung mga tao na yun ay nagiging, uh, sila yung nagiging representante natin sa ating gobyerno. 
At sila din ang mga gumagawa ng mga batas upang uh, mapalakad ang ating guberno. Kaya one of the functions of election is making governments. Okay, the next one or the third rule and function of election is providing representation. Okay, take note that uh, in democracy, nag elect tayo ng mga leaders or mga tao upang maging, represent, uh, maging representative natin. Okay? So, in fair systems, elections become the means to which people demand elected officials are considered the link between the government and the people. So yung na-elect natin ng mga tao or mga leader, sila yung mga link or nagbabind natin, nagrepresenta nag sa ating mga mamamayan. So kaya one of the functions of election is providing representation. The fourth role and function of election is influencing policy. Okay? Elections may hinder the government from pursuing unpopular policies. Elections are considered as a venue by which people can choose official based on policy choices. Okay, so tandaan natin na yung mga natin na mamumuno sa ating gobyerno, sila yung mga gumagawa ng mga pulisiya para influence policy. Okay, now let's move on to the fifth rule and function of election which is educating voters. Paano ba na-educate ang voters through election? Okay? So elections provide elop, uh, the electorate with abundant information during the campaign period and voting process. So the utilization of a wide array of campaign strategies including the use of social media has propelled elections to new heights. Okay, so dito natin nalalaman kung ano ba ang mga uh, platforms ng mga uh, ating mga tumatakbong uh, mga officials. Kung ano ba ang mga priority nilang mga policies o ano bang mga policies na gagawin nila. Okay, that is one of the rules and function of elections, educating the voters or the electorate. The sixth role and function of election is building legitimacy. Okay, so what is building legitimacy or paano ito ginagawa? Okay, so elections provide justification for a system of rule and thus help in fostering legitimacy. So yung mga ina-elect nating leaders, nagiging illegitimate ruler sila kasi tayong mga tao or mga electorate ang nag-select or nag-choose sa kanila. Okay, so in the Philippines as in elsewhere, officials who are given seats in the government are considered holders of legitimate power as the people elected them. Kasi kita yung uh, tayong mga uh, mamamayan ang uh, nag-select or namili kung sino ang mamumuno sa atin. Kaya uh, it builds legitimacy. The last rule or the seventh rule and function of election is strengthening elites. Okay? So while elections can encourage people uh, to participate in politics and link people to the government, elections also be a vehicle to which the political elites can manipulate and control the masses. Okay, so dito uh, napapalakas yung mga influensya ng mga leaders natin upang tayo ay mapasunod. So uh, the last role and function of election is strengthening elites. Okay. Now, let's move on to electoral system. So what is an electoral system? An electoral system is a set of rules that governs the conduct of election. Okay? So, um, uh, in other words, electoral system is a, set, uh, is a set of rules that governs the conduct of election. Kung paano uh, isasagawa ang election? Kung paano tayo uh, mamimili ng ating mga lideratos ng ating gobyerno. So electoral systems are detailed constitutional arrangements and voting systems that convert the vote into a political decision. Okay? Now let's move on to the different types of electoral system. Okay? So first, we have the single-member plurality. 
So in single uh, member plurality, the winning candidate needs only to achieve a plurality of votes. The candidate who won the highest number of votes should assume the respective office. Okay, uh, ito ay pinapractice natin sa ating bansa, sa Philippines. Okay, so take note as you can see the illustration. So uh, the candidate one, candidate one got 20,000 votes. Then candidate number two got 50,000 votes. So uh, candidate one got the highest votes. So siya yung magiging winner. Okay, so take note na sa ating single member plurality vote, uh, iba, ang, uh, iba ang meaning ng plurality at majority. So in majority, 50% of the voters plus one, that is the majority. But in plurality, it does not mean na magiging majority yung votes niya upa siyang ay manalo. So for example, uh, may 30,000 voters tayo. So, si candidate A nakakuha ng 15,000 votes. Tapos naman si uh, candidate B nakakuha ng 5,000 votes. Tapos naman si candidate C nakakuha ng 10,000 votes. So, uh, kahit hindi majority yung nakuha ni candidate A kasi 15,000 lang, no? kasi yung majority votes is 15,000 uh, 15, because that is 50% plus 1 of the 30,000 voters. So in pl ang plurality o ang nakakuha ng highest number of votes is eh, si candidate A, kaya si candidate A ang mananalo. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng plurality. So yan ang ginawa natin sa pagpili ng ating mga uh, officials dito sa Philippines. No? Yan ang binasihan natin kung paano uh, tayo nag-elect ng president. Okay? So yung single member plurality. Second is that we have the second ballot system. So this electoral system is usually performed in two phases to ensure the attainment of majority vote. So take note, magkaiba ang ibig sabihin ng plurality at majority. So yung majority is 50,000, uh, uh, no, 50% 50 of the voters uh, plus one, that is majority. So, ano ba ang nangyayari dito sa second ballot system? Diba? Yung uh, na-elect dito na candidate, kailangan siyang makagarner or makakuha ng uh, majority votes. Okay? So, for example, okay, dito sa ating illustration, may uh, limang candidates tayo. Okay? Si Joe Smith, si John, Jane, Fred, and Mary Hill. Okay? So, Dito, so uh, for example, we have uh, 30,000 voters. Okay. So si John, uh, John Citizen, nakakuha siya ng 10,000 votes. Tapos si Joe Smith, nakakuha din siya ng 10,000 votes. Tapos si Jane Doe, nakakuha ng 5,000 votes. Si Fred Robel, nakakuha siya ng 2,500 votes. Tapos si Mary Hill, nakakuha din ng 2,500 votes. So, Sa ating limang candidates, walang nakakuha ng majority votes. The highest uh, vote that was garnered is only 15,000 and that is below the majority votes. So ang nakakuha ng maraming votes, no, yung top highest voters natin nakakuha ng highest votes, sila yung uh, i-elect natin sa round 2. So ang nakakuha ng highest votes natin ay, for example, si, John Doe, nakakuha, uh, si Jane Doe nakakuha ng 15,000 votes. Tapos si Mary Hill nakakuha ng 10,000 votes. So sila na yung mag, uh, maglalaban sa round 2. So sa round 2, upang makuha na yung majority, so dapat si Mary Hill makakuha ng 15,001 votes. Tapos si Jane Doe nakakuha lang ng 40,999 votes. Tapos yung ma elect na natin or ang iproproclaim na winner are si Mary Hill. Kasi siya ang nakakuha ng majority votes. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng second ballot system. Kailangan ang ma-elect or ang magiging winner ay makakuha ng majority votes. Okay? Now on the second uh, type of electoral system is the alternative vote and supplementary vote. So voting is according to the rank preference until attainment of the majority vote. Okay? So parang pariho lang ito sa second ballot vote. Dito lang kasi sa alternative vote and supplementary vote ay nirarank natin ang ating mga uh, 
ang mga kandidato based on our preference. So, just like in our illustration, no, may uh, lima tayong uh, candidates dyan, si Jones, uh, si James, si uh, Smith, si Anderson, at saka si Barbara. So, tingnan nyo yung illustration na nirarank ng mga voters ang ating mga kandidato. So, si James nakakuha ng rank 1, tapos si Anderson nakakuha ng rank 2. So, pagkatapos nito, uh, tinatali natin kung sino ang makakakuha ng highest votes. So, pag walang makakakuha ng majority votes, ay yung top 2 highest or top 3 highest, yun naman ang pagpipilian natin kung sino naman ang ibubuo natin for the second round. Okay? Tapos, inirarank naman natin sila. Tapos, kung wala pa rin makakakuha ng majority votes, pipili naman tayo ng uh, dalawang nakakuha ng highest vote hanggang ang may isang uh, kandidato na makakakuha ng majority votes. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng alternative vote and supplementary votes. So, nirarank natin yung ating mga kandidato based on our preference hanggang may makakuha na ng majority votes. Okay? Now, let's move on to uh, another type of electoral system, which is the mixed member proportional and additional member system. Okay, proportional electoral cast two votes, one for candidate and one for the uh, one for the party. Okay, so paano ba ito uh, ginagawa? So, for example, if one party wins 10% of the national votes but no district seats, then they would be awarded enough seats from the uh, parliamentary list to bring the representation up to the approximately 10% of the parliament. Okay, so ito ay ginagawa sa uh, United Kingdom at sa Ireland. Okay, so bali ang votes mo dito ay dalawa. Nag-vote ka sa kandidato at nag-vote ka rin sa kanyang party. Okay? So, kaya tinatawag itong mixed member proportional and additional member system. Kasi pag nanalo yung uh, pag nanalo yung tao tapos walang representative or kulang yung representative niya sa kanyang party, so uh, finifill in ito ng, uh, ng mga electorate. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng mixed member proportional. Okay, now let's move on to Single transferable vote system. So, ano bang ibig sabihin ng single transferable vote system? So, quota system under is a flexible computation regarding the minimum number of votes needed to be in office. Okay, so tingnan natin yung illustration dito. So, may lima tayong candidates. First, we have Fergus. Then, we have Lorraine, Sin, Ila, and Frank. Okay, so... Yung uh, sa single transferable vote, may quota tayo. So for example, mayroon, uh, mayroon tayong 50,000 registered voters. Okay? Tapos yung quota natin is, uh, uh, pagpalagay na lang natin uh, 20, uh, no, 15,000. No? Kailangan upang uh, ma-elect ka as a winner, you have to get 15,000 votes. Okay? So dito sa ating illustration, so, yung quota natin is 15,000. So, for example, si Ferg, uh, Fergus thousand okay? Tapos si Lorraine, nakakuha ng 20,000 kasi yung quota natin, kung nakikita nyo, may borderline tayo dyan. So, the quota is only uh, 20,000 votes. Tapos si Sean, nakakuha lang ng 2,000. Tapos si uh, Ella, nakakuha ng 3,000. Tapos si Frank, nakakuha naman ng 5,000. So, since ang quota lang natin is 15,000, so, yung borderline dyan is only 15,000, pero si Lorraine nakakuha ng 20,000 votes. So, nag-exceed si Lorraine ng 5,000 uh, votes. Okay? So, yung kulang uh, bar dyan, yun ang ibig sabihin na exceeding votes for Lorraine. So, yung exceeding votes, no, kasi umabot na ng quota si uh, Lorraine, i-distribute naman yon sa mga ibang kandidato. So, yung 5,000 votes ni Lorraine, i-distribute yon kina Fergus, Sean, Ella, and Frank. So, si, since si Fergus nakakuha lang ng 10,000, 
So pag uh, dinidistribute na yung uh, votes nila tapos sinishare na. So pag hindi pa rin umabot, yung uh, pinaka last na votes, yung votes niya uh, tinatanggal siya, dinidisqualify na siya. Tapos yung votes niya dinidistribute naman sa mga iba't ibang kandidato. Hanggang uh, umabot na sila sa kota na 15,000 votes. Pag umabot na sila sa 15,000 votes na kota, sila na ay uh, mapiproclaim na winner. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng single transferable vote. So yung votes ng ibang kandidato na nag sa kota ay transfer sa ibang mga kandidato na hindi umabot sa kota. Okay? So now we have also, uh, also the uh, party list system. So in this system, parties make list of candidates to be elected and seats are distributed by uh, election authorities to each party in proportion to the number of votes the party receives. Okay, uh, ito ay pinapractice natin sa ating bansa sa Philippines. Okay, so uh, dito sa Philippines, may iba't ibang tayong mga parties, political parties na nagpre-present ng iba't ibang sektor. Okay, uh, kagaya na lang, for example, ng uh, uh, Alliance Coalition for Teachers, the ACT. So, ito yung uh, political party na, na nag-represent ng mga guru natin. So, we have also the Guardian, no? kung saan uh, ito ay nag-represent ng mga, ng mga kababayan natin na mga security guards. Uh, meron din tayong Anwaray. Ito yung mga nagre-represent ng mga kababayan natin sa Samar. Okay? So, ang Bisaya. Ito yung mga uh, ito yung political party na nagre-represent ng mga uh, tao from the Visayas. Okay? So, uh, dito sa party list system, okay? So, yung mga iba't ibang political parties, may nagre-represent silang mga iba't ibang sector. Okay? Tapos, yung party na ito ay may mga representative sila upang ito yung mga uh, representative ng mga taong kabilang sa, uh, sa, kabilang sa sektor na kanilang uh, inerepresent. Okay? Dahil uh, in, the, in the political party list system, itong sektor na ito or itong political party na ito, uh, sila yung gumagawa ng mga batas na magpoprotekta ng uh, mga tao na galing sa kanilang sektor. Okay, kagaya na lang for example ng mga uh, political party kung saan nagre-represent uh, sa sektor ng mga guro. Okay, so ito naman yung political party na naggumagawa ng mga uh, gumagawa ng mga batas patungkol naman o patungkol sa mga guro. Uh, meron din tayong mga party list na nagre-representa ng kabataan. Okay, ito naman yung mga uh, political party. Pag nanalo ito, ito yung gumagawa ng mga batas para naman sa mga kabataan. So, yun ang party list system. Okay, now let's move on to political parties in the Philippines. Okay, so a political party is a group of people that is formally organized for the purpose of winning government power through electoral or other means. Okay? So the political party is the major organizing principle of modern politics. Okay? It links the state and the civil society, the institutions of the government, and the groups and interests that operate within society. Okay, so alam naman natin na uh, maraming sectors sa ating lipunan na hindi uh, narepresenta o walang mga boses. Okay? So, itong uh, mga political parties, ito yung nagrepresenta natin or nagiging bosses ng mga mal marginalized na mga sector. Okay? So, yung mga marginalized sector, ito yung mga uh, ito yung mga sector kung saan walang mga bosses or yung mga rights nila ay para ay parating na deprive. Okay? Uh, halimbawa na lang yung mga sector ng mga uh, farmers, no? Yung mga sector ng fishermen. Okay? Yung sektor ng mga kababaihan, yung sektor ng mga senior citizens, di ba? So, sila yung mga sektor kung saan uh, yung mga rights nila, para, parati silang nadideprive sa kanilang rights. 
Okay? Kaya may political parties tayo dito sa Pilipinas upang yung mga marginalized na sector marepresenta natin at mabigyan naman sila ng boses sa pag sa ating lipunan. Okay? So ito yung uh, ang representative ng mga political parties, ito yung nagiging boses ng ating mga iba't ibang sektor ng Pilipinas. Okay? So ano ba ang characteristics ng uh, mga political parties? First, they aim to exercise government by winning seats in the government. Uh, second, they are formally organized bodies with card-carrying membership. Membership involves taking of formal oath. Okay. Third, we adopt a broad issue focus and address major areas of government policy. Third, we are united by shared political preference and ideological identity to varying degrees. Okay. So, gaya na lang sinabi ko kanina,